fallen silver birch there's lots of moss on it you can see it's pretty much dead and every so often growing on it you'll see a few of these bracket fungus or fungi how much fun they are I really don't know but they're a bracket and they're very much like any other bracket fungus that will grow on a dead or a struggling tree they're also called the razor strop fungus I think they're called birch polypore or birch polyporous there we go again and this tree you can see it's dead because end of the tree well half the tree split right there and the other half of it is on the floor but they're pretty big and uh, oh there's a, there's a bit of a claw mark there but no we're not looking for these there's your sweet chestnut what else is on here sweet chestnut leaves big leaves I love a bit of sweet chestnut great for carving as well lovely grain to it and there's the husk or the shell of the sweet chestnut but we're not looking for these bracket fungus we're not looking for the sweet chestnut we're actually looking for pine resin so we can make some some pine pitch so this is what we're looking for we're looking for the resin which is just oozing out of the tree it could be oozing out of a, a wound in the tree for example but this is very thin it's very thin, what we're looking for is big lumps we can pretty much break off or using an old knife which I have in my pocket we scrape some off, collect it up, put it on a bit of bark as our container or something to hold it on and then take it back home and then process it so I've just spotted what I think is quite a lot of resin oozing out of a pine tree right over there, see that white on the trunk? that there, I'm going to go over and have a look so there's quite a lot on that tree it's quite high up and quite hard to get to so we're gonna leave it and go somewhere else I need something like a tray I need to put the resin onto something so I think I'll use that well it's a rainy day here in England but I think I found what I need I'm using an old knife and this is what we're after. So this is a pine tree and there's resin coming out of the bottom of the pine tree. It's quite cold weather so the, so the resin is quite solidified. If it was hot weather it would be very running, very sticky. So using my old knife, I'm going to place my, my, my collection board down here and just using my knife, just scrape off bits of resin onto my board. And this might take me a few minutes and eventually I'll end up with lots of resin. So this is kind of what we want, but we want lots and lots more. So I'll crack on and show you guys what I've collected in a minute. There we are, there's a bit more, but it's not enough. We need to get even more. So by now you've realized that this video wasn't all filmed in one day. This is what I've got so far. I'm gonna keep looking, but this is only 50% of what we need. So remember, we're making pine pitch. What is pine pitch? It's like an adhesive, it's like a glue. It's great for craft projects and so on. This is only 50% of what we need. The other 50% is made up of 25% dry fibrous material, it could be rabbit droppings or, or something like that and then the other 25% is powdered charcoal so by the time I found lots of this we'll hopefully be back at my camp we'll have maybe some rabbit droppings I'll have found as well and also some powdered charcoal and then we'll then melt them all, mix them together take out any big lumps and then there you go, that'll be our caveman glue how to use it? 
Well, I'm going to show you guys a little bit later on. I do have a shorter video of how to make pine pitch. If you're interested, check out the link below. I've come across an area in this woodland where they've been cutting lots of trees down and look at that, that would make an absolutely lovely table. If only I was able to get that back to the car, I'd put three legs on it and uh, <laughs> wow, that would be an amazing coffee table. Well, it's another day. I'm just making my way to my woodland camp and as I was walking through the woodland, I thought I need some rabbit droppings to make this pine pitch. So what I did was I've left the woodland and I've come to this field and as you can imagine where there are fields right on the edge normally where you'd find rabbit droppings so I was walking along and then I found a rabbit dropping and where there's one there's bound to be more so I'll have to just keep walking along and having a look. And here's a few more. So the first thing I want to do, which is what I normally do, is make fire. For my fire I'm going to use my knife and my fire steel again. And I'm also going to be using these cramp balls or a Daldenia concentrica. They're a fungus and they grow on dead or struggling ash trees and they're great for fire lighting. So I'm just going to place a few of these sticks down because it rained last night and the ground's quite wet. And then I'm going to place a few cramp balls and maybe break a few up over the top. So there's a couple of ways of doing this. I could either strike this several times and risk knocking it over or I could pin one down and strike it, put my knife away and then by holding another piece to it it will then quite easily spread. And I think that's the quickest way of doing it. So that way, one, you save a lot of your fire steel, and uh, two, it just makes it a lot quicker. So there we are, look at it smoking now. Nice and hot on the inside there. In fact, that could do with a bit more. And all you have to do is just touch these very briefly and they start smouldering. An absolutely great tinder. So now that the crap ball is smouldering, I'm going to place some dried grass over the top. A bit of dried grass. And I've I just found some of this lichen as well, which which I'm going to just place over the top as well and it's almost like an upside down tinder bundle now if I blow from the back hopefully within a, within a few seconds we'll see a flame now it's time for sticks but remember really small dry sticks what we're looking for is pencil leads super dry place a few of these over the top. I'm thinking about, I'm always thinking about the wind. 
So the wind's coming from this direction. If I place my sticks downwind, it means the wind will blow the flame into the sticks. Well, I didn't use all of my cramp balls, so that I can use again. And I've just come across these. These are called Jew's ears. We only need a small fire for melting this resin. In the meantime, while that's going, I'm going to show you what I've brought with me. This charcoal we need to turn into a powder. By using this, I'll be crushing it a bit like a pestle and mortar, I'll be crushing it down to a nice fine powder. After that, I then toast off these rabbit droppings in order to get them nice and dry, because at the moment they're a bit fresh or they've been rained on so that there's a lot of moisture there. We really want them dry and fibrous. And then we've got the leftover of the pine resin. So the other day when I collected this resin, I carried on for about another half an hour and we've got a good couple of hundred grams here this will be great stuff once we've melted it down. The process of, of melting it down, you can see there's a, it's, not, it's not completely pure. There's bits of, there's bits of grain, there's bits of, of dirt, there's bits of leaf and bark in there. The way we, we, we would purify it is by using this. So this is what I've previously made. I've made holes in the bottom of this can and this will act as a, as a sieve. So this will purify our resin getting rid of all the impurities and ending up with a nice bit of pure resin. The way we do it is we're going to put the, all this resin into this can, then we're going to put the can on the fire, like so. Leave it for maybe five or ten minutes, give it a stir every so often. We don't want the resin to boil because if it boils it will then go brittle. Once it's melted, we're going to place this sieve over this can, pour our resin into it, this we won't need anymore. Once that's finished, all the impurities will be in there. We don't need that anymore. We'll then end up with lovely pure resin, which we'll then add our powdered droppings to and our powdered charcoal to. We'll then mix it and that'll end up being our pine pitch. So to start with, we're gonna take our rabbit droppings. We're gonna pour them into this container and then we're just gonna to toast them off. While those are toasting off, I'm going to take the charcoal and I'm going to take this and I'm going to start to crush it down into a powder. You can see already it's turning to nice powder. We'll just check on these droppings again. So these have been on for about 10 minutes. They're nice and dry. I'm going to take them off. So I'm just crushing all of these dried rabbit droppings down into a nice fibrous powder. And then I'm going to add the charcoal. Get that all mixed and crush, all, crush it all again. Give it all a good crush. We really want all this to go down to a nice powder. 
what we don't want to end up with is a very lumpy mixture of resin and droppings and charcoal. We want it to be as smooth as possible. So now as we need this tin, I'm going to pour all of this charcoal and dropping mixture back into this shell and then I'm going to place that aside. Now it's time to melt the resin. I want to take all of this resin and drop the resin into the tin. This is when it starts to get a bit messy. So you can see there's lots of dirt and leaf and organic matter mixed in with this lovely resin and the job this sieve will do is it will purify it. So now I've placed all the resin into the tin and there we have it. Welcome to England, it started raining again. So I'm going to place this onto the embers, give it five or ten minutes. I've got my little stirring stick, every so often I'll go along and I'll give it a stir. Remember, we don't want this to boil. If it boils, it will go brittle. So you might be wondering, why are you adding charcoal and why are you adding the rabbit droppings? Well, the charcoal acts as a hardener, because if we were to just leave this like this, one, if it boils, it go brittle, or if it doesn't boil, it would be sticky. And two, the rabbit droppings, what they do is they act as a binder. This is all very important for when it comes to the traditional uses. So when it comes to traditional uses, what would pine pitch be used for? Well, it's basically a caveman adhesive. It's a caveman glue. You'd use it for your arrow shaft, for, for, for attaching your flights or your feathers to the end of the arrow um, shaft. Or you would, you would attach your, your napped piece of flint which would be the arrow head. You'd glue that as well as bind it with maybe some sinew to the end of the arrow shaft. So that's just one of the uses. Another use is it's also great for fire lighting. It's a great ex accelerant for fire lighting. So if you've got a struggling flame, then you can always chip a bit off or break a bit off or use a knife, carve a piece off and then end up by just throwing it onto your small flame and that'll act as a, right, as a good booster. Another traditional use for pine pitch would be, for example, sealing containers. So you can make containers out of bark, and this you could use to seal it, which would then allow you to, to carry maybe liquid or water. One other use for this pine pitch would be to make a caveman flashlight or a caveman torch. Basically, a giant lantern, lots of this, and it would just burn for a long time. So you can see it's, it's all melted, almost. And then shortly we'll be, we'll be pouring it into the sieve. There's a good way of doing a quality test at the end, which is when it's cooled to room, room temperature, you want to see if you can get your fingernail into it and make a dent. If you can't, it's probably going to be too brittle. Another test is once it's cooled, you can then hit it with a rock. If it breaks or shatters or cracks, it's too brittle. So there's lots of recipes out there. This is a recipe that I've tried many of times and it's always worked. You can add beeswax as well. The reason why we add the hardener and the fibres is, is to really give it some strength and to absorb some of the impact. This is why you don't want it to be too brittle. If you think about a caveman shooting his arrow, missing and maybe hitting a tree, or even hitting the animal and straight into bone, this pine pitch absorbs the impact. If it's too brittle, it will break. Think about it. So it's now time to strain off the molten resin into our tin through our sieve. And as you can see, there isn't much residue left over, but what there is, is all quite large, big bits of organic matter that we don't want in our mix. And there we have it, there's quite a lot in there. It's now time to add our final ingredient, which is our binder and hardener, all mixed into one. So I'm trying to tip that all in. 
and that quantity was roughly the same volume as, as resin. And then using a clean stick for stirring, we give that a good stir. And it will start to solidify and foam up. You can see that is nice and pure. There's no, no big bits. I think it's really important to make sure that you, you filter or you sieve out all of the impurities that end up with just liquid. So I'm just going to give that a stir for, for a minute or two. I need to, you need to make sure it's really well mixed. And then I'm just going to place it aside, allow it to start to cool down. In the meantime, I'm going to tidy up. Pine pitch is very forgiving. If it doesn't go to plan, you can always melt it down and either add more fibers, more resin, or more hardener. Try not to get it on your clothes because it'll never come out. As it cools down, it hardens. Once it hardens, you then dip it in and get another layer. I think this is gonna be a really nice batch. You can see, once it's cooled, it's no longer runny. Whereas this is still liquid. So if you want to see me use this stuff, make sure to hit the subscribe button where I'll be making bark containers and various other craft projects. Don't forget to subscribe. So thanks for watching the video. This is the final product. There we are, there we have it. It's our pine pitch, made using pine resin, charcoal, and rabbit droppings. If you wanna see me use this, make sure you subscribe, and I'll be back soon, one day, I'm not sure when, but it'll definitely be another irregular upload, and maybe together we can make a project, a craft project, using some of this. And it's just started snowing. <laughs> have a look. Well guys, thanks for watching. If you guys want to hit the subscribe button, I really appreciate it. Until then, I'm Audi. See ya.